Hi folks, my name is Sam from Helpful Home DIY and today I'm going to show you how to build a floating shelf wall, like this one. Okay, so just very briefly, this is the completed shelf wall, I've still got some patching up to do in the walls behind, but anyway, what we're using here is some PD hardwood, uh, which is from tropical, tropical Africa and it's very much like Moran tea. 32mm thick on the verticals and the horizontals. Um, it's attached to the wall, mostly using concealed fixings, so no brackets anywhere. Um, they're all attached to each other, and it's finished off using uh, a special type of lacquer. That's it in a nutshell, let's get down to it and do the tools and materials first. Starting off, to attach the shelves to the wall, we're using these concealed shell fixings. So what it is, is a rod like that, and a screw in that end, and that screw screws into the rod. What this does is the screw bit goes into the wall via a wall plug, one of those, and then that bit goes into the uh, shelf. So you drill a hole in the shelf and then that slots in so it goes up against the wall like so. Uh, the reason I'm using these is I mean they're designed for sh concealed shelves and you don't see the bracket holding the shelf up. So these concealed shelf fixings are used behind verticals and the horizontals um, on all three layers um, and all the way over there as well. The other type of fixings we're going to use are angle brackets, that's these here. I'll explain why later on, but these I've got a few of these in the top, can't see them because they're at the top, at the back and fairly well hidden. To attach these to the wall, we're again using wall plugs and using 5 by 40 mm standard wood screws like that. Say that's the wall, where the brackets are fixed to the shelf, 4 by 30 screws that have been pre-drilled and go into the wood there. The tools we need to uh, cut the wood, or measure and cut the wood, are obviously a pretty good tape measure. Um, one that shows the millimetres, or if you're in the US, feet and inches quite clearly, nice and clean. By the way, uh, obviously clean your tools before you do this because you don't want to get the bare wood dirty before you finish it with varnish, lacquer or whatever. We're going to need a pencil, we're going to need a standing knife to sharpen the pencil, and we're going to need a pack of spare blades to keep the standing knife stocked up to sharpen the pencil. To cut the wood, we're going to need a chop saw. This one's quite an expensive one. You might not want to buy one just for the sake of making your shelf wall, so you can go and hire one. If you haven't got a chop saw, then just resort to the good old saw. Do yourself a favour, just buy a new one. They don't last. Don't cling on to the old rusty ones, honestly. Not only does it make it harder to cut the wood, it produces a much worse finish. For your saw, you want to have a nice, neat finish. Don't go for a first fixed saw which is the ones where the teeth are quite wide apart. It's for rough, fast cutting. Go for a second fixed saw, nice finer teeth. It'll take a bit longer, but you'll get a better finish. To fix the shelves to the wall, obviously we're gonna make some holes in the wall itself. A good drill, this is a Boss Professional GSB 18 and the rest of the letters are rubbed out. It's got hammer action, which is what you need for going into masonry. And with that, I've got a seven mil masonry drill bit. A masonry drill bit is one where the end is kind of hammerhead, like so. Also, the other bit I need is a hole cutter. This is a 16 mil hole cutter. The reason I've chosen 16 mil is because it's slightly bigger than the concealed shell fixing. Uh, the reason I need that is, well, I'll explain later on. But it's all to do with me having a plasterboard over my brick walls. And to get the concealed shell fixing into the wood itself, you're obviously going to need to drill through the back of the wood. This one in particular is 13mm, uh, that wasn't meant to happen. 13mm concealed shell fixing, so I've gone for a 13mm drill bit. Bear in mind though, if you do go for a 13mm drill bit, that's quite a big bore that needs to be fixed in your drill. This Bosch Professional drill fits up to 13mm, I think. Well, it does fit, I don't know if it can go wider. If the chuck of your drill doesn't go up to 13mm, some don't, you can actually get large drill bits that, with the bore that goes into the chuck, is tapered inwards, like so. And that helps to get in the smaller chucks of the other drills. One other thing as well is when you've drilled through the wood and you're banging it on, it can sometimes be hard to get on, so we're gonna to have to bash the wood from this side, basically the front face, and push it on. During that procedure, you don't want to damage the front face, so you don't get at it with a hammer for sure. To avoid damage, you want a chocker wood and a mallet. What that does is it goes over the wood there and you can bash that as hard as you like and it won't make any imprints on your wood. One thing to bear in mind, especially if you're putting up softwood shelves because that will thin easily, you might need a bigger uh, bit of wood. 
as you're constructing it and your cuts aren't quite bang on, if you're not that confident, then get yourself a pack of spacers. These spacers are about four pounds and there's a load of them that range from one to six mil. Before you finish off your shelves, you want to give it a really good sanding down. So you want lots of P60, P120 sandpaper. For the cutting, if you're using a chop store especially, you want ear defenders and goggles. And I've not got mine on me, but a face mask as well. Also, you want to attach the vertical members to the horizontal members using screws, straight up or straight down. The screws you want for those are five by 90. They may seem excessive, but two things to bear in mind here. There is a difference between the shorter screws and longer screws. The shorter screws, you see how the thread goes all the way up to the head. The longer screws, the thread goes that far and then it's smooth bore. It's actually called tapered bore. That's used for clamping the bottom piece of wood onto there. If it was a thread all the way to the head, it wouldn't allow that clamping action so easily. The shortest screws I've found that have that tapered bore are 90mm long. And you want to go for them 5 by 90 you want to pre-drill the wood as well, so I've used a 3.5mm diameter drill bit for that. And obviously you want to check your shelves are straight, plumb and true, so you'll need a range of spirit levels. you got 1.8m long if you're doing a long expanse, 1.2 and I've got another one at 0.6 as well. If uh, you've got any gaps between them, and gaps, you can be the best carpenter in the world, but bearing in mind that you're fitting this also onto lots of wall pins and when you're drilling into masonry it's not that accurate so when you're slotting those boards onto the wall it tends to shift a little bit here and there so you probably will end up with gaps between these so you need something to fill it with what you want to do is when you're cutting this wood save the sawdust because you, as a filler what you do is you mix sawdust with just any standard clear wood glue and it produces a filler the same color as the wood itself makes sense personally i use this stuff um, which is a filler used for parquet flooring, so it's really hard wearing, but it'll be fine with wood glue. By the way, this is Lee Cole 7,500 filler. Quite expensive stuff, it's about 70, 80 pounds for five kilograms, five liters, um, but standard wood glue would be fine. And finally, what I use to finish off is a mixture of two things. Loba WS2K Fusion Matte Satin, mixed with the Loba Hardener A1, and that is used as a lacquer on top of parquet flooring and it's designed for heavy foot traffic. It may seem over the top, but it does the job. You can use other things, there's lots of options. Varnish, wax, oil, all sorts. It all depends what finish you want and uh, the durability of it. One last tool that I forgot to mention when you're putting the filler in is a scraper to scrape it, to scrape the filler around the gaps and squeeze it into the gaps. This one's actually covered in expanding foam, so I need to sort it out, but it's uh, a scraper. All right, so that covers the tools. The material, very quickly, this is Sapili hardwood for all these shelves here. Probably looking at about 250 quid. That's from a local supplier though. Um, there's a place online where you can order it from, and it's a, the cheapest I found was about twice the price, believe it or not, and they wouldn't budge. So go to your local supplier, just ask to see if they do Sapili. Morantis the same you got all sorts, Oroco, you can just use softwood, pine, don't go for English pine because that's really soft and the grains are really far apart but try to get some, the Scandinavian pine's quite good. You can also use uh, oak, oak's quite good and um, relatively cheap but believe it or not the Moranti and the Sapili were the cheapest bar the pine. And finally, uh, most importantly what you, what you do need is a cup of tea. Okay, so that covers the tools and materials. I've got a full list of these if you want to print them on our website, helpfulhomediy.co.uk. So after you watch this video, if you're not on the website already, just pop on over, click on the how-to section at the top and scroll down to the uh, floating shelves how-to and pretty much at the top of that will be the list of tools and materials for you to print those out. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually measure the space that the shelf wall is fitting in. I mean, it, it's quite a structure kind of thing, it has a big impact on the movement, what I'm saying, so we need to make sure we get it right, which is why it's important to just sketch it out first, especially if you can make that sketch to scale. On my sketch, I'll go from one wall to the other wall, it's about 3.6 meters, and the height as well from floor to ceiling. The other things I need to put on there are socket locations, light switches, the window, opening including the sill, the desk, how the desk is going to look and any skirting or architecture. So once you've got all those measurements, put them onto paper. There is another bit on my how-to on my blog post about how to draw the scale. So if you nip over to the website, 
um, and, and have a look at that. Okay, so once you've got the scale drawing and you've had a chat with the missus about it, it's all agreed, um, it's looking nice and symmetrical and all the rest of it and you're happy. So let's get down to the first cut. So the first cut in this case is the top left hand uh, horizontal member. Now I suggest starting from the top and working down. The reason being is because it, as you're putting in the, the upper ones, if you put one in right down at the bottom first, then you're gonna run into problems. It's just gonna get in the way. The other thing to be aware of is if you've got a support bracket like this, where it's got sharp edges, they could damage the wood on the underside. <coughs> In this case, they're shelves, so we want both sides to look nice. So we've just got to put some masking tape over this just to protect the wood. So this measurement is 1.853 meters. The first thing to do is when you get the bit of wood, it'll be cut either end, obviously, because it comes in length. If you look at the ends, you'll notice they're probably not square. So the other bit of kit you'll need is a good size set square. I'm just checking the squareness of this. So you can see how that's not quite square. It's got a bit of a gap down at this lower end here, and less of a gap, and it's touching up there. There we go, getting focus. Just going down to the other end, we check that. Okay, well that looks much better. Okay, and to be honest, I would chop both ends. I wouldn't rely on the ends that have already been cut as supplied. So we'll make that first cut right on the end here, and then we do the measurement to make the second cut. <laughs> So after we've made that cut, we just want to check that it's nice and square against that, which it pretty much is. So we we'll go back to making our measurement of 1.853 meters. Back on with the goggles and the ear defenders. By the way, you should really be wearing a mask as well. Right, so just going back to the design, I know it's 2.07 metres off the floor to the underside of that top shelf. So I'm just going to mark that on now. One point up here, another point over there um, for either end of that board, um, and then we take it from there. And we know it's 1.853 metres <coughs> for the length of that board. So before more marking that, this mark up from the floor, just want to make sure we're roughly in the right place. So from the wall, right over from the left there, 1853. And I'll just do a little vertical mark there for that. And then from the floor level, 2.07. 2.07 and you can see that's your distance from the wall there's a 2.07 so it's going to be around there somewhere now don't rely on those two points being perfectly level between each other remember we measured both of them up from the floor the floor might not be level so we need to do a check on that so we get a long spirit level need a 1.8 meters long so we're just going to check that now we can line the bottom of the spirit level up with the Markings because we can't see over the top. Well, you probably can, but I'm pretty sure. Alright, so not quite level. So I'm going to go off the left hand one, adjust this spirit level so that it's bang on. And I made my mark there. See, that's quite a difference. That's about five millimetres. So we want the shelves to be level more than anything, regardless of whether the floor's level or not. So that's the mark from the spirit level. That's the mark from measuring off the floor. We're going to stick with the spirit level one. So that's more we're going to work off. Now we need to measure, um, mark on where we're going to put the holes uh, for the two outer supports, pins. So what we're going to do is come along 100mm, there's the outer corner, come in 100mm and we're going to go up half the, half the thickness of the board. In my case my boards are 32mm thick, so I'll come up 16mm and that will be in the centre of the board this side and I'll also do the same coming this way from the other corner. So now that we've done that, obviously one thing to check whenever you're drilling into a wall is make sure there's no wires behind either using a detector or don't go directly above a light switch. So I'm going to go ahead and drill those two holes 
uh, we are basically drilling a hole to slot one of those into it's a wall plug and when you screw into it it expands and really grips in the hole the instructions say use an eight millimeter drill bit for this so you start off with one mil less seven if it doesn't fit it's fine just drill an eight in it and, it and you know where to go from then on obviously one other thing is when you're drilling just try to keep it as straight as you possibly can Okay, so one other thing to bear in mind is this wall, it's got plasterboard, then two mil thick plaster skim coat all over a brick masonry wall. Say this is the wall behind here, and there's your plasterboard. So if I screw in there, I've instantly got about 15 mil less of the screw going into the wall plug, which isn't good. So what I suggest, and I've slightly over egged to that hole, to be fair, is you drill the hole in the masonry first, and then you use a hole cutter just a timber hole cutter would do on, on the end of your drill, just so that this bit can pass through and hit the wall on this side. It just gives it more support, especially if you're doing one like this and the shelf can be quite heavy. And there you can see that the smaller hole going through the masonry behind the bigger hole for the plaster. Okay, so I, even though the instructions said eight mil, I ended up drilling a nine mil hole, which got it in nice and snug. And you can see in there the wall plug has gone snugly in the hole and I've got loads of room around the outside for the uh, bar. So what we do now is we will just twist this on. Okay, so I had to use monkey grips in the end for that um, because it got quite tight. The um, pins do come with that ability to use a spanner on them, um, but if that part, that bit goes past the plasterboard, as in my case, then obviously you can't get a spanner there, so the old monkey grips it is. And then we do exactly the same for the other side. So, chances are that the pins aren't going in completely straight or level. So you're okay just to bend them, I mean they'll be close enough, to bend them slightly so they're straight. Obviously, along the horizontal, just get a little set square and check that, and then bend it as necessary, and the same the vertical as well just check that once they're bent straight then what we can do is set about measuring between them to get the exact dimensions between them and then marking that out on the shelf itself on the wall on the wood so we want the distance between them exactly down to a tenth of a millimeter if possible we just hook that over the edge so we're going from that far end because that's where it's hooked over not the middle but the far side of the pin to the far side of this pin that's one six 1,642 millimetres and in terms of how far up from the bottom of the shelf they are okay so the measurements I will need to take to the piece of wood are the distance from the end of the wood to the middle of the pin the distance from the bottom of the wood to the middle of the pin the distance between that middle of the pin and that middle of the pin distance from the bottom of the wood to that pin and that's it those four dimensions that's all i need to measure it out on the edge of the wooden shelf so we take those initial measurements and just do them as accurately as possible So as we need this hole to be as accurate as possible, I'm just going to start off with a very small drill bit. This is just a, I think it's a four mil. And then we'll um, step it up each time to get the length and up to 12 mil, which is a diameter in this case of the bars. So small drill bit first, keeping it upright. Stop it halfway through, give it a check this way. So that last one was actually two and a half mil. Step it up to four mil. Go to six mil. Eight mil. Ten mil. Then the final twelve mil. And honestly, I know that's fat, but that's the best way I've found of using a normal handheld drill, getting a nice straight hole, just bit at a time, 
um, seems to do the job. Right, so this is the tricky part. We've got to line up these holes onto these, and then once it's on, because it's going to sag down because it's not got those vertical support supports I was on about, I've got this to prop it up. Okay. Just for the bigger wax, chocolate wood that you don't mind getting dinted, even with the mallet, you still didn't that. And this is sort of medium hardness wood. And just you're hitting against the. That's there. Uh, that's Kate and Ellie. Alright, keep that going. That's one shelf in. You might not be able to see it. In fact, I get a picture of the side angle. It's bowing down slightly. On here, just because it comes out 300 mil, it's heavy wood, it's only two pins. Now, what we'll sort that is when we put the verticals in. Remember those verticals either side of that? As long as we cut those off straight, and we'll push that up when we push that into the bottom of the shelf there and keep it rigid. But uh, they're not going anywhere, that's for sure. But that's good, it fits, great. Good measurement. So what I did with this one is I've got one pin coming here, just hold this in place. The reason being is because this is supporting the shelf above about a third of the way along. It's not quite obviously halfway, but a third of the way. So if this has support in, and it sports pretty much the mid span of this beam above so that uh, it can prevent it sagging there and really get some good supporting. The other good thing about having a pin, just one in the middle there, is it means I can pivot this one that way to get it right vertical. So I've slotted it on, and that's all same as per the last shelf. Spirit level up against it there, and then I can make an adjustment. Just a few little taps, nice and easy. Obviously whilst clamping this, uh, big clamp helps and just check that and that looks good spot on so then i'll go to the top to attach this to this i will draw some screws in from the top and i'll show you how i hide them okay so i transfer the position of the downright uh, vertical one using a set square just just tracing it around the edge of this top shelf and then along there as well just to get the line along there so I'm going to put three screws in here, one, two and three, can't get that one in yet, but hey ho. Screw first, pre-drill with a uh, drill bit, say two mil less than the actual screw itself. And I want to kind of sink the heads in a bit, so, so I've just got a deburrer there. Five by 70 screws, they're galvanised, 70 mil long because this bit is 30 mil, so it's quite a bit to get through in the first place and that's the first one in and you do the rest with the other two uh, here's a close-up hopefully that'll focus and what we do is at the end we just get some of the sawdust that we created from this wood mix it with a bit of wood glue put it over there wait for it to dry skim it off with a Stanley knife a bit of a light, light sand and you can't tell it's even there right so one other thing is obviously as I was saying earlier the top can come off the wall the whole shelf thing can go like that and then pivot on the bottom. So you want to prevent that from happening and the best time to do that is now. My wife's just giving me a worrying look. Uh, the best time to do that is now um, and then you know it's secure in place as you work your way constructing the rest of the shelves. So you want a very common angle bracket there. It's not the best light but you see the gap there. So we're going to put the bracket with the gap as well. And the obvious reason for that is so that we attach this to the wood first. We do the wall plug in the wall and then we, as we tighten the screw with this bracket up against the wall, it'll pull the shelf towards the wall, making it nice and tight.
So what we need to do now is fill the gaps, as in uh, the recesses for the screws and a couple of the gaps. So what we do is, we've got the sawdust here that we use to, well, obviously it came from cutting the wood, and it has to be the same wood as the gaps that you're filling. So we put a bit on here, and we want them to really fill the gaps, so we want it as fine as possible. So just a household sieve, and sift that onto there. It just gets rid of the really big bits. You end up with really fine sawdust. So that just helps fill the cracks. Lee Cole, I think 7,500 filler. Uh, you can get it in smaller canisters. It's not cheap. This is about 75, 80 quid worth, but it's the top job. So we just mix it up and it goes the same color as the wood. So we've got a screw hole here. There's our filler. Then just squeeze it out. Same as you, you do with, say, poly filler when you're filling a gap. Um, and it does sand off as well. Don't worry about, about getting it spot on. And what we do is we wait for that to dry and then sand it off. Should take about 12 hours or so, I think, to dry. And the other bit is <coughs> slight cracks, well not cracks, like gap along the bottom here, I mean it's like less than 10 to a millimetre, I'm really fussy, so I'm going to fill those as well, so just a little bit on the corner there, really squeeze it in. then we'll be able to sand that off tomorrow. And the day after, you can just sand it off so it looks a bit wet still. Just sand it a bit. You see, it looks pretty good. Right then, so once that's all sanded down, um, we need to basically coat it. And uh, you can use varnish or whatever you want. Uh, I use Loba 2K Fusion mixed with the hardener 10 parts to one, and that makes it absolutely solid. Do it by weight. Sort of this way. Gonna use the brush to get it on. And I'll start in the corners. So that took about three hours, quite a bit longer than I thought it would. Um, so we've just got to let it dry for at least, I think it's six to eight hours. And then we'll give it a light sanding, uh, and then we'll put another coat on. By giving it a light sanding, it means that the second coat is uh, finished, evened out quite nicely. Right, so it's the morning after, um, and it's all nice and dry. So what we do now is just give it a really light sanding with some 120 grit sandpaper. Just very lightly pressing down, hardly creating any dust, just to get rid of uh, I mean, it's, the surface is a little bit rough, so it's just to get rid of that roughness. And then when we put the second coat on, it'll just be that bit smoother. Just be careful around the corners. Don't sand off too much. It's just, just taking off the top sort of roughness of the uh, lacquer. So now that uh, we've sanded that down, then we can just give it a quick hoover and brush, and then we're good to put the second coat on. Okay, that pretty much sums it up. So obviously every shelf wall is different. So if you're a bit unsure, then uh, I always put a bit extra on my website. So if you go over to www.helpfulhomediy.co.uk, that brings you to the homepage, click on the how to at the top menu, and uh, you'll see the how to blog post on this. Thanks for watching folks. Please remember to subscribe and like this video and uh, I look forward to catching you all next weekend.